What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is The Stump. We do it every Wednesday, 3 p.m.-ish in the green room over at 98 One The Max, where we showcase uh, local Memphis town, local uh, Memphis bands from the music scene. We talk about what's going on, where they're at, what they're doing. Uh, next week, I have no idea who we're coming up next week. I am... I'm running around with a chicken with my head cut off today. But today, we have very special guests, like their music, and uh, we're going to talk about it, Blood Like Wine. Hey. How you doing? Good, good. Dizzy, Mike, thanks That's for coming awesome. on. Thank you for having awesome. us, Ross. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It was funny, Mike, last time I saw you was at Tom Segura. Tom Segura. Tom Segura, which was one of... You know what's funny about, like, if I go to a show, especially, like, stand-up or something like that, I'm laughing the whole entire time. I can never remember... And I'll go sober, and I can never remember half the stuff I heard. I'm just like, I just know I had a good, had a good time. time. Yeah, I know I got seated in the uh, in the Orpheum, and I'm good and comfortable there with my girlfriend. And then I just happen to look up and I go, "Is that Ross Turner?" <laughs> I heard my name, and I was just like, "Ignore and focus, <laughs> ignore and focus." I think I think I waved at you. And I was like, "Good to see you, bud." And I, I yeah, I was with there with a, uh, a work colleague, but. Uh, yeah, it's good to see you today. How are we doing? We're good. We're doing really good. I think so. As you're working, mate. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But like wine, you guys are playing the first first ever Omega Fest. That's right. This Saturday, this Saturday. at the High Tone, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. And you guys are playing with a whole... It's like a crazy lineup. It's a great lineup. Because let's... I mean, we'll talk about you guys first. It, it's, it's funny. It's interesting about you. You play the washboard. I do. Which I don't see enough of. I really don't see. It. I mean, like, because I'm like, like, who plays the jug? Because like, you, should, you should. I actually thought about electrifying a jug for this man at one we, point. We did early talk about on. That. We talked about an electric jug. Yep. It never happened. It hasn't That's happened like yet. Jack White stuff right there. If I could see him like bit. playing like a distorted wah pedal on a, on a washboard, and then coming up with like a fuzz pedal hooked up to a a jug. Something right. Yeah, I've, going a little I've nuts. come up with a few ideas. Electric washboard, that didn't work out. Instant uh, pirate A noise. triple washboard <laughs> where they've all been uh, manipulated to sound different, that didn't work well either. But um, Wait, you, you, like, you were running through like the options of this? Yeah, I've, I've, I've tried to come up with a way to make it more interesting, and the best I've come up with is playing the thing barehanded and hitting myself in the head with it. Okay. That's, that's where that we went. Is, which is where we went with it, yeah. Oh, so you don't use the... Uh, because I, I've, I've seen you guys play, and you, you don't have, like, the metal... No, no thimbles. No, no thimbles hands. on the... Bare hands. Just, just bebopping around. Just bebopping around. Yeah. Just, just a little, the little pep in our step, you know? Yeah. Things happen. Well, because you, cause you, you, for, for those of you who are not familiar with Blood Like Wine, period. Right? Period. Yes. Period. period. Blood Like period. Wine, period. What's All the... lowercase, then a period. Why the period? Um, it's, it's a, a reference to E.E. E. Cummings. Okay. Okay, cause it, it's funny because it, it's it's kind of you guys do spoken word and then music uh, music. Mm -hmm. It's like separate because your ba your uh, your album um, was it not ca uh, casual? It's crude language. Crude language, crude language which I want to get to that in a second because you have some spoken word up there because I'm a big fan of uh, Saul Williams. So like I, I don't see enough yeah. people doing spoken word and, and incorporating that with music. Much. It really doesn't. And then you're playing some like uh, like really dark undertone acoustic acoustic music as well and I'm one, and like I was just kind of impressed like you kind of interchanging the two of those together yeah yeah that that's good is stuff. creative ADD my friend yeah that's, what that that's is. essentially what that is you couldn't settle on one thing it's couldn't like we just have all these ingredients in a pot let's uh, stir it up and see what comes out yeah open yourself up to to do whatever because you can go in any direction Oh, it's funny you say that. We're going to get to that. We'll get okay. To that. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, we can go there right oh, now. I got, yeah, I got clearance to talk about a few neat things. Oh, okay. All right. Well, because uh, Crude Language is on all streaming services. I saw it on Spotify. You're on Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. All um, of them, yeah. Yeah, like the 12, 13 tracks. Uh, probably 17. 11 on Crude Language and 6 on Heel Turn, the EP from last year. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, about 17 all together on, on Spotify and, and all that good stuff. And that came out, and what's what's the title of the uh, EP? Heel Turn. Heel Turn. That came out September. September of last of year. Of last yeah. year. Okay. So how long has Blood Like Wine uh, been together? About two years. Two Just years? about two years, yeah. How did we start this? Um, we met through a Facebook poetry group. 
Yep. Uh, all right. And started writing together, and we were friends. Ross. We were friends for nearly a damned year before the girl even mentioned that she played guitar, uh-huh. that she could sing, or that she had the ability to write some of the best songs I've ever heard, and I listened to a lot of different music. Yeah. So the minute I found this out, like, I started pushing her to be in a band, and it took like another nine months before I got her on a stage. But once we got there, it, we haven't stopped. Nice. Won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. We miss you, Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> what did Biggie say? He's like, you either got, or you got a wicked jump shot or you're slinging a crack rock. Oh, jeez. Yeah. We're doing but both yeah. of those things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not, not really. We're not, we're not doing that. That's cool. So, uh, so what are you, are you very, were you modest about playing the guitar, or you just you don't lead with that? To me, it was just something that, you know, you grow up in a, a family where you're kind of, you know, secluded and religious, and you have your siblings, so you have your instruments because you grow up in a musical kind of family, and so you just play around, but it's never something that you do seriously, you know. It's just something you do for kind of fun in your own back porch enjoyment kind of thing. So then when he was like, oh, you do this? And I'm like, I mean, but like not really. Yeah. <laughs> not really. I'm not do now? really a musician. I just have an instrument and I kind of know some chords and I, you know, can occasionally. play with it, right? Yeah, and right. occasionally comes out every once in a oh, while. Right, so it's just, it wasn't something that I, I really thought that I was like committing. <laughs> that hey was Mike, a great listen to this song I wrote. This what that you what? <laughs> yeah, that's basically how it went, and then it was like, oh, okay. But I still didn't know we were going to be, like, here. I thought we were going to, like, release this one little project and maybe do a couple of shows, and I'd be like, oh, look, <laughs> I did a show, and then that was going to be it. Yeah. But it's two years later, and here we are. Yeah, and you put out an EP, we and then have, put out a full put album. We've a lot of stuff, and we've done a lot of amazing things, and I can't, it's a weird fortuitous turn of events but it's not something i saw coming well i think the best things in life a lot of times you Honest, don't plan like you can't plan right, your best but you, you can't plan your best day no yeah, and i and i, I like that uh, and it's cool because you were friends for about a year before and then you found out that you play guitar and then wh- what was that meeting like when all of a sudden you're like all right well let's do this was it was there apprehension because if you were sitting there yeah I was totally, totally apprehensive. The That's first, why it took nine months to yeah, get it rolling. Yeah, he wanted me to like play in front of somebody. And I was like, you want me to play in front of one other person? He was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Better patter. I don't yeah. know if I can do it. <laughs> Which is, yeah. It's, so, yeah. So, I have, I have really bad uh, stage fright and uh, anxiety being anywhere. Yeah. Basically, so <laughs> so it's been it's been uh, this has been a, a journey of self discovery and testing myself to see how much I can actually cope with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you look in this inside the heads of most people who perform, uh, you'd be surprised to find like, out how many people are just like, like just, get <laughs> just get it over with, just get it over with, just get it over with. Just stand up and I'm like, <laughs> not me. I love what I do. No, he does. <laughs> but I just feel like. How long have we been playing? Forty-five. Let's give them an hour. Oh God! You're playing like playing like forty-five hour sets. It's yeah. been known to happen. Wow, that's that's a, that's quite a set, man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it, it's fun though. <laughs> and when you aim to give yourself a concussion every third song or so, mm. it, it gets a little more tough. Yeah, We're hitting your head with the uh, the, the washboard. washboard. It, it's it's happened. There have been a few concussions that I have witnessed. Really? It's. Yep. <laughs> So the get- worst one was uh, St. Patrick's Day this year. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, the worst one. We opened one. for Chinese Connection Dub Embassy. And it, it was, was amazing. Time- it was amazing. That's the last time we got to see Omar when yeah. he was great. alive. It was great. Uh, so we're at Canvas, <laughs> and uh, I've got this washboard that's seen better days. I got a new one at home ready for the next show. So I think, F it, right? Yeah. And I've hit myself enough times to put my head through the galvanized <laughs> steel to where I'm wearing the wooden frame as a necklace. Yeah. The pieces of it are still my drunk. Pieces of it are still <laughs> my drunk. <laughs> I feel like, so are not all, So you're like a wrestling poetry music act. Yeah. 
Yep. I feel like if there's a town that you hit yourself in the head with a washboard, Memphis is probably a good town to do it in. Memphis is the best town. Do you take the razor and cut your head, or is it all we, authentic blood? About, yeah. About, <laughs> Don't give away future tricks, Ross. Yeah, I'm just see. saying, come to any blood like wine show, and there's a good chance I might make myself bleed. So you know, does the phrase "stuck hog" mean anything to anybody? It uh, stuck hog. Yeah. Bleeding like a stuck hog. I've heard. Okay, stuck hog. I've heard stuck pig. It's stuck pig. Yeah. God, and you know what? I watch all those those videos of how they train do- uh, pigs to like behave and sit and roll over and stuff like that. That's terrible. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to turn it there. What but the hell, Ross? Just, I don't know. You know what? I, <laughs> if anything, social media is ruined for me. It's ruined pets and like other animals that I eat because then I like one guy plays bass guitar in a field for a bunch of cows and they start doing like the call and response. <laughs> And I'm like, man, don't like ruin my steak. Don't ruin don't my steak. Ruin don't ruin my steak. steak. It's so good. It's so delicious right now. <laughs> Gosh. It's the music that makes it delicious. That's what they don't tell you. They play music for these cows. I'm, I, I mean, that's just a theory. I can't prove any of this. Yeah, Could I, you imagine if you like <laughs> had a bunch of livestock and you suggest that's probably not something I can say. Yeah, I know. Why don't, why don't we I was just... gonna say like pulverized with like heavy metal music. I know a progressive metal pig when I see it. I know when I taste one. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-tenderized meat this pig <laughs> from did, the base. This pig was really in a rush. I can just feel it. <laughs> oh, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> it won't stop howling at me. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, uh, Crude Language, uh-huh. when did that, oh, when the album came out? May. May? Mm-hmm. Awesome. And, uh, it's not good that we both posed that as a question. Well, because th- we were originally going to have a release date, and then it got changed, and then we mm-hmm. did, so... Because so. Yeah, right, so it's so it's fine. So I was like, I don't remember exactly, May seventeenth, but, but yeah, but it was like May. That. Yeah, that sounds right. May seventeenth. That was a really long answer. Yeah, it, that's cool. I mean, good. I'm sure it took a long time to write all that and put it down. You might it as well. Didn't. It didn't. No, it didn't. <laughs> What's turnaround from when you came up with the songs and we're like, oh, we gotta get these down. She knocked a couple out last fall, but most of it was written between February and April this year. Okay, it's the music making machine. Well, that's my. It's my homegirl. Yeah. We've got, um, yeah. Let's let's talk about something. It's funny. Just, you know, here's a segue. Uh, that's a professional term. Sure. Yeah, Where yeah. <laughs> um, we are in the process right now of wrapping up writing uh, for our next album. Okay. Uh, that we're going to sit on for a year and, yeah. you know, let the songs age, which is a uh, trick we haven't tried yet. Okay. Right. But um, we wrote an entire 13-song album in the space of two weeks. Okay. Maybe three. It was a very productive... We didn't sleep a lot. We didn't sleep a lot. It was a very... It was like a kiln. It was a kiln experience, and out of it, we've got a whole album that is pretty solid. Nice. The set at Omega Fest uh, Saturday is half new stuff from the new album okay right. so so uh, we're gonna be dropping gonna be it fun. sort of as a as a teaser start letting people that's see what what the what it's sounding like awesome so it hasn't been recorded yet but you know you're gonna start road testing them right yeah i think we might go in and do a single uh during the winter that's maybe the try plan. to have it out by christmas i think that's the plan try to have one out yeah um which will be a new experience because i've never done that before what like really really gone into a studio and recorded anything. okay thing where do you where do you plan on going what are you thinking uh anti-loyal with uh shelby pruden from walking on landmines okay yeah awesome yeah shelby's the guy yeah he was actually one of the first people that um took this band remotely seriously so uh Which I, is I, I trust him with our sound nice nice the language was recorded on uh my iphone just straight up the voice. You recorded recording. crude language on your iPhone? Just like straight up recording. And, and he'll turn too. Just like not not even like run it through like a program, just your voice recording app, just sitting right there on the coffee table and us jamming out. That's how that happened. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so what we did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, no, I, I like that because it, it was. I mean, it's we could pay for studio time, or we could do this and have money left over for the Willie Nelson special. 
Well, it, well, it's, it's, it's completely within FCC guidelines. Well, it's funny because like, you could spend uh, you could spend months, years, or whatever waiting to do something, but if you sit if you sit too long, it'll just be that idea that you talk about and you actually never comes to fruition. So when you start putting stuff down and putting stuff out, it forces you to step up your game. It right. forces you to c write more. It and forces you to think, now that you know other people are listening to it. Right. Yeah. So, right. So it, it seemed to get, people seemed to resonate with crude language, I think, more. Starting with heel turn and then, and then crude language even more. So it's like, okay, so y'all can hear us. Y'all seem to have no problem with listening to us as it's recorded there. So let's try to, you know, spoof it up and make it make it even better. Next yeah. level, you know, next level, and and do that and see how that turns out. See what we can do with that as an added, you know, ingredient to the pot that we're stirring up. And that's kind of how I look at it. So. Well, I mean, I, like I would think that anything is like a staircase you're just trying to climb. And get and, better and, and get better and better and, and, and refine and that's 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 the goal. Everything should be visibly better or audibly better, whatever. Both. Both. <laughs> well, yeah, it all should, the above. Should should all be apparent. And so I feel like that's we. I feel like there's a clear progression of our work. Now going, going to this. Yeah, and going to the studio, it is it is a different experience. It there's a little more pressure. Um, there is a little more like definitely you feel a little more under the gun, but at the same time you have different tools at your disposal mm -hmm. to help out. I mean, one right. of the things that we thought w w was struggle for us was the click track. Yeah, and that was looking forward to that. Yeah, <laughs> I hate I hate being in the studio anyway. Uh, yeah, he does. I, I I really don't like it. So what 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 what, what why not? I play music solely because I enjoy the live performance of music. Mm -hmm. So yeah. any time that I have to spend cooped up in a studio making a record to sell so that people will pay us to perform live, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's all a means to that end, and I, I don't like any part of this other than performing and hanging out with the people and, you know, whatever. You like the, was it the capitalistic form of it or is it just the idea that it's turning this into a job i think it's yeah I think the, the work aspect becomes a job the work like, aspect this is yeah. like fun. oh this is the not fun part this of it the that not i fun have part to do this. so i can do the fun part of it exactly that's that thank you for that well yeah i mean it is it, the life there's nothing there's no substitution for playing in front of people and like the response you get it's a, definitely a drug if there ever was one mm -hmm. i mean that's why i think you, a lot of guys that's why Toto's touring at 60 in their 70s. Right. You know, like, hang it up, Toto. Because people want to hear Africa. <laughs> you guys hold the line. There right? are so many chord changes in that, in that <laughs> song. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it is a whole much, a lot more complex of a song than I ever thought. And then we tried to learn it on the fly one time at uh, Memphis's Crappiest Musicians, this live show that they did at a high I tone. Remember, they, they're just picking songs out of Fishbowl, and then a whole band tried to learn it on the fly. And it was oh, impossible. Because no. you'd have to look it up the tabs on your phone. Right, right. And then you'd have, <laughs> yeah, and then you'd have to, like, all right, I think that this is what you do. I think this is what you do. Do that! And you're like, everybody's kind of freaking out, and it's like. Like flashbacks to, like, the All West. <laughs> <laughs> What's All West? I like band stuff like back when you'd like go with like the band to like all west and be like all right everybody has to sight read a piece of music all together for the first time and you'd have to sit down and no okay just no. kidding no no no, no but elaborate elaborate so, okay so like so like when you were like in band like middle school high school you would go to like all west all west tennessee and then i guess there was an all state but so like you would go, and there were different levels, and one of the tests that they would do to see if your band, like, qualified or if you, you know, got some special, like, award or whatever is you would all go into a room, you'd sit down, they would hand everyone in the band a piece of music that nobody's ever seen before, put it down, you have, like, maybe, like, a minute to look over it, and then they say go, and then the, you just play the composition from go as a whole band, and you just wing it and try to get through it and so like you're judged on on your ability to do that so, you're judged on improv right you're judged on your ability to sight read this music and just you know go with it and you know so like i don't know that sounds like american idol auditions Kinda. you know how like people like come in like that's what they go in and everybody laughs at everybody because right? they just basically do that to shame people right 
But those judges, I'm sure there's a lot of bands out there that are just solely so fine tuned when it comes to that. Just exactly like they're like, oh no, we know this, no problem. What school did you go do that? Or did you? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, like I went to like Collierville. That was like out Collierville in middle school and okay. stuff like that. So, did you do you remember what site what piece you had to sight read? I don't even know. I it was probably some like music score something or other it might have just been created for like the thing so like nobody's ever heard it before and you can't like you know yeah wing it based on your memory of a particular tune or something it's not like Mat- like the soundtrack to matilda or something like that oh god <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah soundtrack to matilda i don't know why i even pulled that one out i, I saw I bet that was written by danny elfman i wouldn't doubt it no, same guy who did the same guy who did uh Batman, yeah. the first Batman. Yeah, I feel like that was some Danny Elfman music. I'm gonna go look that up for sure. It is kind of weird that the modern day, like at least for uh, mass consumption, the modern day classical music <laughs> is, is movie is movie soundtracks. It's movie soundtracks yeah. like James Horner. And yeah, like, but it's 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 real though. It's so good when you're like, oh my god, listen to this this major uh, what's his name uh. New guy, old guy. No. John Williams. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh, I can't believe Hans Zimmer. Yeah, but Hans. Yeah, Hans. Hans Zimmer. Yeah, Hans. Hans. Like, he actually tours with his orchestra yeah. and plays like all his movies, and he'll do Interstellar. I can't. Uh, he'll do Batman, the like the newer Batman right, with uh, right. with uh, Christian Bale, mm-hmm. and. Like it's inc- it's an incredible show with like with video accompaniment behind him and uh, and he played That's at Coachella crazy. two years ago, and it was amazing and people were like Hans Zimmer what are you doing, and it was and all these what people what am I not doing yeah I'm living the life man and all these people were like you know tripping on Molly wearing like glow sticks <laughs> for hats and shoes just... are watching this like wow. Right, because it's like a totally immersive experience, I'm sure. Because like orchestra is just amazing. Yeah, I I, I would love the to Molly see. Molly probably helps. I'm sure it did. <laughs> I found in beats that they didn't know were there. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> so uh, uh, I had a question. Okay. Because you went because because you do spoken word and you're you're and if I, and forgive me if I'm saying this, you kind of have like some dark undertones to some of your songs. And I heard crude no. language. Yeah. And I heard crude language. I was wondering what was inspiration for crude language because now that you said that you came from a religious, religious background, you're playing guitar. I was oh. wondering if there's a, like a no uh... <laughs> over sweeping message in the end, or it just sounded cool. <laughs> okay, well, I want to let you take this one. Thanks. Essentially, the philosophical yeah. premise behind it is essentially that verbal or written communication is really crude between humans sometimes. And sometimes, uh, you know, you can be sitting across from somebody, maybe you can be on the same page and you never know it because there's a breakdown in communication Mm -hmm. or you never know that there is a breakdown in communication because we just have these words and even though words are awesome, and they can communicate a great deal. They're still very crude as far as a means to communicate goes between people. Okay. Um, so that's the that's the that's the. That explanation kind of makes me feel bad that my only contribution to that record was a reference to uh, human sacrifice and dead horses. Ooh. <laughs> no, I mean that's that's one of the best parts of the record. So, human sacrifice and dead horses. And dead horses. Okay, I, I line, sir, uh, you just stepped up to the plate. Yeah, what do you yeah, got with that? I used the line, a mass grave full of chariots that swung too low, heavenly horses still horses still tethered to their heavenly anchors. Um, because I wanted to paint a picture of like a, a horse-drawn chariot Very crashing from the sky and bar- falling so far into graphic. the ground that it buries itself. All right. Yeah. Like Icarus. Yeah, something. Flying too close to the sun. Again, I don't smoke that much reefer. Okay. <laughs> but you are well read. I do what I can. Yeah. Yeah. 
we we don't have much to do besides read and then tell each other about things we've read. So that's that's forty percent of our entire friendship. Yeah. And the rest is the band. And the rest is me going, Hey, I wrote a poem about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't don't wanna forget that, do we? What are, what books were you on right now? I am reading uh, Bob Dylan's Nobel Lecture right now. Snowball Lecture? Nobel Lecture. Oh. <laughs> what the hell is I don't a know. Snowball Lecture? I, I'd love to hear They it did though. it in Congress one time. Oh, Global warming is not real because look at this I snowball. Have a snowball. Yeah. So, Nobel, what's, what, what angle is it from? Um, basically, my understanding anyway is that when they give you a Nobel Prize, you have to deliver a, um, what's the word, like a, a Nobel. thesis, I guess? Nobel. Nobel. I was thinking Nobels. I was like, all right, cool. There's no bells in his music. Okay. No bells okay. in his music. <laughs> Crude language. Crude, Crude language. language. Yes. See? Okay. Um, so, so you have to give uh, <laughs> Songs also about warning wood. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> You're turning three shades of red right now. <laughs> You're ruining me. Go, go, go. Did you? Here. Um, no, they, they, they give you the prize, and you have to, you, you have a certain amount of time before you have to deliver, uh, like, a thesis. And Dylan did his as a recording over jazz piano that was then printed as a book. Okay. Yeah. Um. I can send you links. He, wait, like so, so he wrote a he wrote a speech to jazz music. Yes. Okay. And 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 released it uh, just little subtle jazz piano behind him. Does Bob Dylan listen to Tool? I hope so. <laughs> Is this a? Fit? I don't want to live in a world where Bob Dylan doesn't <laughs> dig on Maynard, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty cool. All right, you, what are you reading these days? To be honest, I haven't been reading much because I've been working on trying to get my own books out and work on this album and stuff like that. So, so you're right. You're a writer as well. Yeah. Okay. Actually, uh, we just did my book release. My, sorry. You're good. Sorry. My uh, my second book release uh, this past Friday at the High Tone, where there was wrestling happening outside. Nice. And uh, there's a really cool video up. Um, on YouTube that like juxtaposes the wrestling and like some of like the spoken word. Yeah. Which is really awesome. Yeah. A really great filmmaker yeah. uh, came in like a works for PBS, I believe in little rock, uh, came, uh, through Memphis on his, I believe on his way to Mississippi and was like, Hey, I just read that the show's happening in Memphis tonight. You guys care if I come document it. Like, You're more than welcome to come on. Right. And what he came up with was, a brilliant video of these wrestlers in the back lot of the high like tone. The poetry of violence. Uh, yeah, and that's just what it's smashing fluorescent light tubes on Memphis, each other's faces. And it's yeah mixed with homegirl here reading one of her poems. From from here, I, I brought these in case. So this is my second book. So <clears throat> excellent, the Milky Body. Yep. May I, may I put that? I guess. Yeah, I guess you can. Where so. can uh, people find this? Uh, you can find it at the publisher's website, Nix's Mate. Um, you can also find it at Amazon, um, Barnes & Nobles. I should say your local independent bookstore. There's several of those in Memphis. Um, so if you don't want to buy it from the publisher, I would suggest finding it in your local independent bookstore before you order it on Amazon, but it can be found there also. <laughs> that's awesome. Most people talk about writing a book. You actually wrote one and put it out. I've, that's my second one, and my third one's coming out in March, and we've got I've got like four more that need to be organized. It's just... She doesn't stop writing. I see the face, man. Yeah. She, she doesn't stop. Yeah. So, yeah, so violence, dark undertones in our blood like wine, that's prevalent in everything I write. Gotcha. So that's kind of how we She's sort of messed up, man. Well, yeah, really but that's why up. we're friends. We're like, oh, here's another person who writes with dark, dark themes. Let's be besties. <laughs> where do you think all those dark themes? Like, what's your inspiration for that? Is it just life experience? Is it just, is it uh, things that you see and just the lens that you look look at life through? Because I was curious. Because I, and the reason why I say it is because like I was talking with, uh, I was talking with my girlfriend about this, 
will like I'll look at a train go by mm-hmm. and for a split second I'm like, just jump in front of the train. The call of the void. What's that? The call of the void. Is that what they call that? We were yeah. just talking about that. Yeah, on the way it's here. it's it's when you have those split second thoughts that are just like like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you just <laughs> twisted your car to like coming traffic? All the time. It it's just, just pops in. And it's just these, just fleeting. It's just there. On the way here, I was like, what if I just like <laughs> rolled out of this moving car? Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be something? Right. Wouldn't we get it's some lulls just, out of that? It lasts for a half second. And when I was growing up, I was afraid to tell anybody about stuff like <laughs> that like, because oh, I was like, they crazy. will put me on drugs and commit me. Right. And then the older I get and the more I talk about it to, with other people, they're like, yeah. And then I remember, like, when me and my girl were yeah. talking about that, I was just like, I had this, I'm like, man, I love you. Because we had this honest <laughs> moment. Where we're like, we also have these things. Yeah. yeah. And that's good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, good. It's, it's good. <laughs> I, that's, that's good that you could have that moment where you're like, ah, oh, we both have these things that are kind of vulnerable sort of things that we don't. Yeah, it's just... not love unless you can look at another person and say, hey, sometimes I have brief fleeting thoughts of killing the both of us. <laughs> 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 and that's how Fight Club was created. <laughs> that's exactly how that happened. That's, that's one of the reasons why I appreciate Chuck Palahniuk so much because it's so dark. It's so it's yeah. so dark, but at the same time, it's inspirational because I would find such brave bravery in the in people who get to talk about that dark little secret in our subconscious that we right. rarely acknowledge that many people have. But if they they're ashamed to share it, because if they do, they'll be ostracized in some way, shape, or form. Right. Good thing we're already uh, musicians and artists. So yeah. <laughs> well, you get that advantage, that vehicle. We're like, we're already ostracized. Just lay it on. <laughs> 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 I love it. I love it. So are you going to continue? I take it that we're going to continue these dark themes on, on the new album that we're about to record. Yeah. And, I mean, it's not all, you know. Yeah, I don't mean to paint it as all dark. dark but, but, I, I, but I think it's realistic. The um, new album is more, I was about to say, more realistic. It's just realistic. More, I, I, more brutal, brutally like I, honest. I mm-hmm. write poetry, but I don't like to think that I use like flowery language of any sort. If you're looking for a Hallmark card, you're not going to find it in anything that I write. Yeah. Um, it's going to be blunt, and it's going to be to the point, and it might leave you feeling exposed and raw after you're done with it, but I think that's part of the healing process of poetry so i won't apologize for it yeah i think these new songs once we get them uh all fleshed out and recorded are going to be darker just based on the mindsets the, the mindsets and the the stylistic change we're about to go through yes, yes. we're expanding to a full band yes okay um i'm going to play bass she will remain doing what she's doing only louder and more distorted nice and we have jeff from hate doctrine on drums now Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. love that guy. So that's nice, it. Hi, Jeff. Yeah, hi, Love Jeff. Yeah. Um, so our first full band show is at Growlers on January 11th, I believe. Oh 11th. wow! Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Cause you're expand. All right. So you're expanding. So you're literally growing and expanding. We're literally just going expanding to a full band and, and getting hella heavy, Ross. Nice. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Which is interesting because he was like, hey, let's go heavy. And I'm like, I don't know how to write heavy songs. I don't even know how to write the songs I'm writing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. But I think that I, – I don't yeah, – so, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Promptly does it 13 times in a row. Yeah, well, I mean that's kind of – I. it's kind of like the – like like an egomaniac with the inferiority complex. Like you know I got to do this. I don't know if it's any good, but you know, like, and you kind of just figure it out as you go. As you go, like, does this sound all right? It feels like it sounds okay, you know. Um, I think that's an honesty, and I think th- uh, there's an honesty to that. And I also, I don't know, what, what, what did Hunter S. Thompson say? He said that the problem with the world is that all the confident people are idiots, and everybody who's smart. I'm, I'm, ru- I'm ruining right. this, this quote, but like all the. The, the, the yeah, smart like, people I lack know, confidence. Like, to, to speak out. Yeah, I, I remember something like that. It's been a minute since I read that book. Yeah. A minute. <laughs> like but yeah, you, yeah, but you, I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't think you should know what you're supposed to, what you're, if you know, I don't, I don't think you should know how to do what you're doing if you haven't done it before and you can't fake experience. So right. that's cool that you're, I mean, you recorded your, like your EP was on the iPhone, your album was on the iPhone, and now you're going in the studio. So, like, I love, 
I love the idea of just screw it, let's do it until we figure it out. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, not that I consider any of that stuff fake Mm-mm. material. That's all genuine. But no. it was just sort of just us figuring out. No, they'll put me in the ground proud of both of those records. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I'm I'm very proud of both of those both of those efforts. Mm-hmm. Uh, very proud. That was learning experience. But this new stuff though, they just ain't ready, is they? <laughs> Are we going into the band? Uh, are we going into the studio? Anti, anti, anti loyal, anti loyal studios uh, with the full band? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. Uh, next album is a full band effort. Um, I think we're going to put that out next October. Next we October. Really give our time, ourselves time to do it right. To, since I don't know what I'm. Dude, what I'm doing? <laughs> let's 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 take a little bit of the pressure off as far as like a time. Be like, okay, professional we got this song, musicianship. So let's, yeah, let's go. Uh, you know, like knock it all out. We'd be like, let's. <laughs> it's ready when it's ready. It's ready when it's ready. And we we got the songs because we've we've got them. Yeah. So it's just and a matter we of got nine, ten months to make to, them to as just solid make as them be. as good as they're gonna get. Because if there's anything, the first two records could have benefited from it would be time to let those songs grow settle and and kind and of we, expand they were all pretty much recorded as soon as they were written okay I mean, not, not within, exactly within a few weeks like i mean not like general. oh hey i just figured out the song let's record it for the album you know not like that but it's like a matter of weeks and we're giving these months nearly months, a year yeah before we commit yeah, to so, their final um, sound. Smart. Maybe somebody will, you know, give us a million bucks or something. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know about all There's that. There's always the hope. Fingers crossed. There's always the hope. But I hope, hope they come out and mosh when we have breakdowns. That'd be awesome. Yeah, no, just moshing during the <laughs> breakdowns would be appreciated. Yeah, that, that, that'd be, that'd be, that's, that's ideal. Like, well, let's talk about Omega Fest. Okay, yeah. Let's talk let's, about. Let's talk about Omega Fest. Fest this Saturday at the High Tone. Um, Diverse lineup. Yes. Very diverse lineup. You have, because it seems like it's half rap, half bands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't heard of any of these people, but I love the names. Rico, the acronym? That's Rico Fields from Negro Terror. Okay. Rap. All right, Rico. 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 Oh, Rico. Who is this? Okay. That's him. Rico, the acronym. And then. Stand you, Rico. Do I, is Tom Ski Maskick my brother? Or do I know? <laughs> do I know him too? <laughs> he was one of the early um, products of the Memphis rap scene back in the '90s. Okay, uh, pioneer on a you know a game-changing scene. Okay, um, so there's him, there's Rico, there's us. Uh, Jr. Truth. Jr. Truth. Hey, Truth. Yeah. Black Black Hippie's black gonna hippie. be playing. Oh, yeah. I love Black Hippie. Love Black Hippie. Josh was actually the first person that ever expressed any interest in paying for our music. Yes. Yeah. He really? For that. He saw us at our third show, the the one with Negro Terror, yeah. the high tone. And um and he approached us and he was like, Hey, do you do you guys and I was like, This guy's for sure about to ask me if I know where to find cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, You guys have any CDs? I was like, You want to Is buy? that slang for cocaine? <laughs> yeah. It turns out it wasn't, and and no, we didn't. But we we could have made a few bucks that night, you know, to spend on our own cocaine. <laughs> no, no. We do not endorse the sale or consumption of illicit drugs. <laughs> not even a little bit. Not even. <laughs> no. That's cool. Though, when well, yeah, when people start asking for uh, for if your you go, physical copy right, of your album, that's, that's like, a beautiful oh, moment. Wow, okay, great, sure. Again, and that also creates a step on the staircase. And you're like, okay, now that we gotta do this, now that we gotta do this, we gotta, we, we gotta have exactly this, and we gotta happened. have that, so we gotta have that on deck and stuff. Uh, so, Beg is playing. Uh, I know. Barrow like, and yes. MPX. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Woo! stacked. Start. It, it, I believe Doors are at seven. Is music start or music start at seven? The uh, Doors at seven. Music at seven thirty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kick it right out. Not, kick that, it not right. that hour. Right. And there's going to be like, a, it sounds like there's like eight people playing. Eight. Yeah. Eight so artists what? for 12 bucks? Yeah. Can't beat that with a stick, now can we? 
Now, it's now, did you guys organize this one? I yeah. did. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's my birthday, it's and birthday. I thought I wanted I, well, I want a nice birthday party. Let's bring in Tom Ski Mask and Rico, and let's do it upright. Nice. And then I was like, this is basically a festival, and I thought, I'm two years deep in the Midtown music scene. There's no reason I couldn't put on a yearly festival and see where that takes me. Yeah. Because it's not like there are already 12 of those, right? Yeah. But here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of people are putting together birthday shows these days, but you know what? I'd rather a birthday show than, you know, you go to like a paint by numbers wine party, you know, at, at, at these wine bars. Right. <laughs> you know? If they play musical instruments, they probably do the same. But you know what? They don't. I'll play as many birthday shows as I can. Yeah. It's a memorial show. You feel me? I hear you. I I understand. (laughs) But Omega Fest uh, this Saturday. uh, And then you also have a show in November coming up as well, I believe. I saw on the calendar. Two of them? We've got the memorial for uh, James Manning at Growlers on the 3rd. And then we're playing with Natural Born Leaders from Asheville, North Carolina, and Black Hippie at the High Tone on the 16th. Nice. Yeah. And that will probably be our last show for the year. Okay. So the next time you see us after November 16th, people, will be January 11th with a weird sideburn guy playing drums. We love him. Yeah. Uh, old Jeff. That's that's awesome because I, I imagine December is going to be practicing and working this yeah, out and getting this together. To get it all, all Spending together. Christmas with my kid. <clears throat> nice. That too. Because here's the thing, I've been spending so much time on this band stuff, and don't tell him or his mom that I said this, but I don't quite remember his name. Okay. (laughs) But he knows you love him. (laughs) He knows. Uh, I hope he knows. He seems to have doubts because he's like, you don't even remember my name, bro. (laughs) Has he got got to see you smash the... uh... The washboard over your head no, yet? No, no. I don't want to give him any ideas. Okay. <laughs> he's he's a tiny me to begin with. So he, he says what he wants and he does what he wants. And the last thing I need to occur to him is that he can hurt himself. Or hit you over the head with the or washboard. Or hit me over the yeah. head with the washboard. Like, oh, okay, that's how you that's how you like the washboard used? I can help you, Dad. That's got to be a rite of passage later on in life. Right. Yeah. Your friend's got to teach you how to do that. You're right yeah. here. Yeah. I'm entrusting you with a washboard of your own. When you're ready, you two will bust it over your head. Where do you yeah. buy a washboard? Amazon. Amazon? <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> okay. Bucks, man. I was just hoping you would say, well, it's funny you say that. There's an antique store. Right. <laughs> that, that they exclusively deal in. No, I get a lot of people where they'll be out, like, antiquing or at a hardware store or something. And any time someone in my life comes across a washboard, they'll take a picture of it, send it to me. Like, hey, look what I found today. I was like, I got enough. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One day you're going to have a whole washboard room. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just with, like, the See, this is why I'm switching to pedestal. bass so that I don't end up. Please. Being buy, that guy. <laughs> buy me all the guitars you want. I don't want a washboard room in my house. <laughs> he wants a washboard room in his house. <laughs> I, I kind of <laughs> want a washboard room in my house. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. You got All right. So we're going in the studio. Um, December. S- December. So we're going to take take that off from live shows, mm-hmm. then like immediately after recording that, or at least in the middle of the process of that, if you're taking your time, right. yeah, then you're going to, yeah, then you're going to go play, start playing live shows as, 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 a, as a full band. As a full band. Getting these songs the out The plan there. is to drop a single either Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve. Okay. In time for the show on January 11th. Just gotcha. To, just to get some ears perked up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm excited to hear it. I'm excited to see what what, what direction you're growing in, yeah. Because that's pretty cool. That's an exciting thing to see where where it's where like you go. If because craft work covered the New York death metal band Suffocation. That's what I. It's not at all. Like that, but um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm lost. Side project. Time. You got a lot of beep boop boop beep boop boop boops <laughs> in there, and a lot of yeah. No. Just, you just mix those. <laughs> no. None, there's none of that. There's none of that. Actually, I will be screaming on some of these new yeah, songs. Yeah, he will be. So, there, so there, there's a little bit of that. But there's, um, we're going to keep the blast beats to a minimum, at least for now. Okay. Yeah. Or not. For yeah. now. So, because it's funny, is if you're going to get that heavy, what are you going to be doing? Because you, I mean, you sing with a full body voice. And so are you going to have to, are you going to have to really kind of get that rasp? You're going to figure it out as you go. Well, something something that's helped is since we recorded Crude Language, uh, which uh, both of the records we have out now were recorded in standard tuning, and we've tuned yes. down a whole step. So okay. now I'm pl- – right. So everything is 
is tuned down into D, and I've found that that really helps me construct songs that are in keys that I can do a little bit better on. I feel like I'm doing okay keeping pace with the change that we're making. But Awesome. Because yeah. she had serious doubts. Oh, I don't know if I, I can do this. I absolutely believe you can do this. There you go. And look at her doing it. Because sometimes I'm right about things. You know what? Mm, no, why don't you tell me what? <laughs> Not on air. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I'm glad you guys, it seems that you... Uh, you support each other in every way, shape, or form, and that's a. Uh, it's my best friend, man. Yeah, and that's and that's a great recipe for a long-standing uh, relationship, Pretty and you know, oh, a, yeah, this and, band and, and is band. What my heart does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes hanging out before before we go up a little bit a little bit easier. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. You know. No, someone's got your back. Right. I can't even imagine if we were just like, oh, okay, well, we're going to go up, but like we don't talk to each other or we don't hang out or enjoy each other's company because we spend entirely too much time around each other if we got sick of each other like that. That's for 20 years from now. Right. Yeah. Right. You had to earn the I'm right to hate, to each, to hate each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to write a tell-all, yeah. make up ridiculous lies about her and her life. <laughs> and nobody will doubt them. <laughs> nobody will doubt them. That's awesome. Well... I really appreciate you coming on today. It was awesome talking with you. It was fun. This yeah. Was fun. Blood Like Wine, Mike, Dizzy. Uh, make sure you check out our book. Um, under, can we say your pen name? Yeah. Your pen name under Mary uh, Deweese. Yeah. Deweese. Uh, local bookstores, look for it. This is The Milky Body. What's the first one? Kinky Keeps the House Clean. Kinky Keeps the House Clean? I almost want to extend this just a little bit more. <laughs> but, but Bud Like Wine. We they, got all the time. Yeah. We got. <laughs> they're, uh, they're playing Omega Fest at the High Tone this Saturday. Doors are at 7. Music starts at 7.30. I mean, incredible lineup. You got rap. You got rock. You got everything in between. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Really appreciate you fun. coming in. It's fun, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Woo. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. And, uh, oh. There we go. That's one for you. But uh, it's it's the stuff. We do it every Wednesday. I'm not sure who we're having next week. Just now, I don't have my phone in me because we're looking at it right now. But uh, we'll be sure to keep you, uh, yeah, keep you informed. And thank you for joining us.